From stories across the globe to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharif Tahir. Good evening. I'm Lakshit Indra Singh and we start off by taking a quick look at the headlines. The President instructs officials to regard verbal orders as circulars and act accordingly. A five-judge bench appointed to hear petitions filed against the proposed 20th Amendment. PCR test results of the Russian national identified in Mathura return negative. Pujit Jayasundra reveals before the Presidential Commission that the former president proposed to offer him with a diplomatic post if he accepted the responsibility of the East Sandhya tax. We move on to those and other stories in detail now. A look at local news first. President Gota Biradipaksha emphasizes that all verbal orders given on behalf of public well-being should be regarded as circulars and implemented. The president states that stern action will be taken against officials who breach such orders. The president expressed these views initiating the Dajanapati Gamasamaga Pilisandara program from the Velandita village at Haldamulla in Badulla today. The Janapati Gamasamaga Pilisandra program was launched by the President with effect from today to directly look into issues faced by rural areas. Thereby, the President arrived in the Haldamulla Velanvita village in the remote areas of the Badulla district today. <laughs> The gathering on hearing issues faced by the public was organized at the Kumarthana Vidyalaya. The president instructed the officials to carpet the road from Akkarasiya to Valanvita, address the drinking water requirements of the area, and take steps to provide electricity within three months. Considering requests put forward by area residents, President Gotabe Rajapaksha instructed the relevant sections to provide communication facilities to the village within a few weeks. I'm 
The president instructed the officials to rectify all shortcomings at the Kumaratana Vidyalaya that has been restricted to 16 students and pledged to take speedy steps to rectify the shortage of teachers at the Nikapota Mahavidyalaya at Kiravanagama and the Koslanda National School. He also instructed the officials to provide a playground for the Alamalita Mahavidyalaya and to upgrade the Hapatale Tamil Mahavidyalaya to the level of a national school. The president also focused attention on appointing a principal to the Vallavaya Gampaha Mahavidyalaya and on rectifying shortcomings at the Soragune and Jananda Vidyalayas. The president also advised that the speedy construction of the 35-kilometer stretch from Beragala to Vallavaya on the route along the Colombo Batikla Road be executed together with the road up to Vallavaya in Kalipanavela, Halkanna and the 100-acre central road of Kakutu Arava. At the conclusion of the discussion, the president visited several cultivation lands and residences to inquire into the issues faced by the people. <laughs> The president was accompanied by Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva and several ministers and parliamentarians and also state officials and prelates. Something that changes your life story. Litro Gas. Welcome back and in more stories from home, a five-judge bench has been appointed by the Chief Justice to hear the petitions that seek a declaration from the court stating that certain clauses of the 20th Amendment are in violation of the Constitution. The petitions will be taken up for examination on the 29th of this month. The five-judge bench comprises Chief Justice Jayanta Jayasuriya and Justices Buonika Luvihare, Sisira Diapru, Priyanta Jayawardana and Vijit Malalgoda. Currently, 18 petitions have been filed in the Supreme Court against the proposed 20th Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, in most stories from home, the Double Tree Viravila Rajavarna Resort Five Star Hotel was opened to tourists by Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa yesterday. This is the newest hotel constructed by the KDU Adventures Company at the bank of the Viravila Tank. The hotel, which spans 21,000 square feet, consists of three luxury restaurants and 88 rooms. An all-night pirit chanting was conducted before opening the hotel to tourists. The hotel has been opened to tourists under the Double Tree brand name by the management of the Hilton Group. Tourist attraction sites such as Yala Bundala and Udavalava can be accessed within a short time from this hotel complex, which is situated in close proximity to the Mattala Airport and the Viravila Bird Paradise. The opening ceremony was attended by several ministers and chairman of the KDU Group Saman Upasena.
A discussion between Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa and fishermen of the North and East was conducted today on the issue of Indian fishermen illegally entering Sri Lankan waters. At the discussion, the Premier stated that he will discuss with Indian Premier Narendra Modi through video conferencing tomorrow and provide a solution. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa paid his last respects to State Minister Roshan Ranasingha's father, the deceased Thomas Ratnapala Gunatilaka Ranasingha, at their hometown residence in Bandivevat today. The late Thomas Ratnapala Gunatilaka passed away yesterday. He was 77 years at the time of demise. The final rites will take place at the Rajarata Navodaya grounds at Kaduruvela in Polonnaruwa tomorrow. Chief Epidemiologist of the Health Ministry Consultant Dr. Sudat Samaravira states that PCR test results conducted afterwards on the Russian national identified in Matara had confirmed that the individual has not contracted COVID-19. The Russian national in question who arrived in Sri Lanka as part of the crew of a cargo flight tested positive for the virus on the 23rd of this month and the results of a PCR test conducted at a private hospital were released. 333 COVID-19 patient has been identified in our country. Out of that, only 162 are in our hospitals under treatment. 13 uh, patients were died, but all the other people got cured and they are back in home. The last case that we identified detected from the community screening is on August 2nd, and now it has been passed more than seven weeks without a case uh, detecting from the community. That means that we have achieved a very good control in the community without reporting cases. But this is not a uh, thing to be relax our preventive measures. Because the, the simple reason is that the, this is a pandemic. The disease is spreading uh, very rapidly all over the world, especially in the United States of America, uh, then uh, Brazil, as well as our neighboring country, India. Now India is the second highest in the world with COVID-19 cases reporting. So because of that, we as a country should take all the precautionary measures, all the preventive measures throughout until this pandemic is controlled throughout the world. Uh, this includes that we should maintain that one meter distance when we are in the society at every place, as well as that we should wear a face mask properly that covering the nose and mouth and also that we should wash our hands frequently and we should not uh, touch our nose and mouth uh, and the whole our face frequently. So if you do that, these things that uh, we will be able to control COVID-19 very well and we, that uh, the, what we achieve now uh, will be able to maintain uh, in future also. 25 staff members of the hotel in the Matara area which accommodated this foreign national have been PCR tested and sent to quarantine. Welcome back. We continue with more news here at home. The Sri Lanka Podujana Engineers Front has rendered its contribution in taking development to the villages. They have embarked on a project to construct small-sized bridges to replace improvised bridges in place in rural areas. Various reports are received pertaining to difficulties faced by rural folk in many areas due to the absence of proper bridges. Therefore, a solution, the Sri Lanka Podujan of Engineers Front has taken the initiative to launch a small-sized bridge project utilizing electric posts. They have received the guidance of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha and Basil Rajapaksha. Their objective is to construct strong bridges at low cost without government funding. The task will focus on constructing strong bridges to replace precarious improvised bridges that places lives at risk. The train which will journey from Beliatta to Kankasanthure whilst chanting Pirith on the way departed from the Beliatta railway station today. The Pirith chanting train has been named Navavasare Saubhage Dakma Pirith Dumriya, the Pirith train of the vision of prosperity. This endeavour is organised annually by the Bosat Social Welfare Foundation and the Dambadeniya Kaudumunna Rajamaha Viharya jointly with the Department of Railways. This year's Spirit Chanting train journey has been organised for the third time. An all-night Spirit Chanting and Dhamma sermon was conducted at the Beliatta Railway Station yesterday. 
The train which departed today stopped at the Mathura, Gaul, Ambalanguda, Kalutara and Ragama railway stations, whilst today's final stop was the Veyanguda railway station. The train will recommence its journey from Veyanguda to Kankasanthure tomorrow. At the respective railway stations, donors can contribute with offering Atapirikara, building materials for the construction of houses, school equipment for 300 school children, a nutrition pack each for 150 pregnant mothers and dry rations for low-income earning families. Devotees are invited to patronize. Gaul Chief Magistrate Harshana Kakunavela today ordered that Arma Hennadi Janit Madhusanka alias Podilasi be re remanded until the 9th of next month. Podilasi was produced before the Gaul Magistrate's Court in connection with charges pertaining to allegedly threatening the President, the Defence Secretary and senior prison officials with death. The suspect was escorted to the Gore Magistrate's Court amidst police STF security. Deputy State Solicitor General Dilip Apiris informed court that the CID recorded statements from Podilasi on the 18th of this month. At that point, both Podilasi and Kosko de Taraka denied the allegation pertaining to threatening charges. The Deputy State Solicitor General informed court that 30 firearms were discovered in possession of Kosko de Taraka. He further stated that indictments will be filed against Podilasi and Kosko de Taraka in the coming days. Although Podilasi sought permission to make a statement, the magistrate rejected the request. Further presenting details in court, the Puri State Solicitor General Dilip Apiri sought permission to record statements from Mark Andre Madush and a prison commissioner pertaining to the investigations into the threatening statement voiced by the first suspect in the case of Kosko de Taraka. The magistrate granted permission for the recording of statements. The Kiribatkada Police Crimes Division arrested an individual in the Sapukaskande area in possession of 213 grams of heroin. Upon a tip-off received alleging that heroin smuggling was taking place in a rented house, a raid was carried out during which an individual attempted to flee. The police state that upon arresting the individual, heroin was found hidden in his clothes. The suspect, who is a resident of Grand Pass, has reportedly smuggled heroin to the Kandana and Valampitiya areas. The police also seized five mobile phones and several ATM cards. Today, the motorcycle squad of the Kalania camp of the police special task force succeeded in uncovering a heroin racket operated from Muadora Uyana Flats at Grand Pass. The police STF state that six suspects, including two women, were arrested with 10 grams of heroin and they have been handed over to the Grand Pass police for further investigations. Meanwhile, testifying before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday attacks, for the third day yesterday, former IGP Pooja Jasundra stated that on several occasions, the former president had stated that if he accepts the responsibility of not preventing the Easter Sunday attacks, the, Mal the Malalgoda Committee report can be altered and he can be appointed to a diplomatic mission overseas. Testifying before the commission, the former IGP stated that he had a suspicion since telephone records to prove that other officials acted in response to prior information pertaining to the attacks were available, although his mobile phone records were not available. He further voiced suspicion in this regard as back then the chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom was a sibling of former President Maitripala Sirisena. The ch justice chairing the commission questioned as to whether the witness notified then State Minister of Defence, Ruan Vijay Vardhana, when prior intelligence pertaining to the attacks were received. The witness responded with the words that translate as, quote, It was useless to notify as he is not active, since only training and two or three other institutions came under his purview. On the other hand, amidst the contemporary political disputes, I did not make an attempt to notify, unquote. The justice chairing the commission then queried of the witness as to why he did not notify the cardinal and the Catholic Church. In response, the former IGP stated that the received information was not confirmed. 
At this point, the justice questioned as to why the witness did not alert the cardinal when intelligence was received on the previous day, which was the 20th of April, warning of an impending attack the following day. In response, the witness stated that at around 5 p.m. on the said day, Nilanta Jayawardhana telephoned him in this regard and the call lasted 2 minutes and 13 seconds. The witness further stated that he informed for Nanda Munasinghe to be notified and a short while later, then Defence Secretary Hemusiri Fernando also inquired into the intelligence information. The former IGP pointed out that telephone conversation records of all telephone calls involving himself are not available. He alleged that undercover agents of the State Intelligence Service were deployed on surveillance of his residence. The witness leveled, again, leveled allegations in this regard at former President Maitri Pala Sirisena and the connected political authority. Former IGP Pujit Jasundra also revealed that the former president on several occasions and through various officials influenced him to accept the responsibility of the Easter Sunday attacks. Today marks the eighth consecutive day of the Colombo International Book Fair 2020 organized by the Sri Lanka Book Publishers Association for the 22nd time. Book lovers around the country are gathering up for this momentous event. It's a conversation. All books talk. But a good book listens as well. Today is the eighth day of the Colombo International Book Fair organized by the Sri Lanka Book Publishers Association for the 22nd time this year. Despite the bad weather experience in this area, we can see a large number of people attending to buy books today as well. As the exhibition is conducted amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the organizers have taken the necessary precautions to adhere by the health guidelines. When you visit the exhibition premises, you are required to wear a face mask and it is mandatory. The facilities are available to wash your hands as you enter the premises. Maintaining social distancing as much as possible will help you to be safe. Frequent announcements are made to remind you to abide by the health guidelines. We are here witnessing the launch of a new book by Professor Asoka Pandarage, and this is the second edition of the book Colonialism in Sri Lanka. And we have Professor Pandarage with us, and I'm going to ask you, how was the feedback that you received for the first edition, ma'am? I think it was very good because I gave a different, broader perspective on the colonial experience, which didn't really exist until I wrote the book. And uh, what led you to go for the second edition? What do you think you have included that the readers might be enthusiastic about reading? Yes, in this new second edition, there is a chapter on neocolonialism in Sri Lanka, which explores the continuation of colonial processes in Sri Lanka today. We certainly look forward to reading a copy of your book and all the very best for the launch. Thanks so much. Thank you. So such as these launches of the books, we are witnessing many other books being launched at this premises at BMICH. We invite you to be a part of it and witness and participate in these launches as well. the Rue Entertainment Stall by Sri Lanka Rupohini Corporation and if you pay a visit you stand a chance to go through the available documentaries, dramas, your most favorite cartoons which were telecast on Rupavahini and you have a chance of purchasing them as well. So if you pay a visit to the Colombo International Book Fair, do pay a visit here as well. With that we remind you, we Sri Lanka Rupohini Corporation is the official electronic media partner for the exhibition as well. The exhibition is on till the 27th of this month and every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. you stand a chance to experience and browse through the available stores. Over 400 publishers are available, making available all the latest books for you. The 61st commemoration of founder of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, the late SWRD Bandarnaika, falls tomorrow. At a commemoration ceremony was organized at the Sri Lanka Freedom Party headquarters today. 
The late SWRT Bandarnaika, born on the 8th of January 1899, received his education at St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. Upon completing his higher education at the Oxford University in England, he returned to Sri Lanka as a barrister. He entered active politics through organizations such as the Singhala Mahasabha with the ambition of creating an independent and sovereign state. The late SWRT Bandarnaika, upon gathering together the five strata of society, namely the Sangha Veda Guru Govi Kamkaru segments, formed the Sri Lanka Freedom Party on the 2nd of September 1951. In 1956, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the Mahajana Eksat Peramuna formed a government under his leadership. Several significant decisions were taken under his leadership, including declaring the Sinhala language as the state language, transforming the Vidyodaya and Vidyalankara Piriven into universities, the state acquisition of the ports and bus service, the declaration of May Day as a public holiday, and the establishment of the Employee Provident Fund. The late SWRD Bandarnaika was assassinated by a gunman on the 26th of September 1959. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, former President Maitri Palasirisena, was the chief guest at the commemoration ceremony held at the SLFP headquarters today. Former President and Chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party parliamentarian Maitri Palasirisena claimed that the late SWRD Bandarnaika was the only leader who put, who put forward a political vision for the country. Former President Sirisena further stated that he ascended to the presidency on the 8th of January 2015 to run the country according to the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. That's all the stories we have for you tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at the very same time. Good night. Have a pleasant night.